Hi everyone, this is CY once again. Thanks for joining me today. Right, um, I have made a uh, video unboxing the Quick Meal Sunny, I think, um, a day ago. And I think the um, the video was premiered yesterday night. And today I'm just going to make another video to show you how uh, this machine actually works. So the plan is very simple, right? I, I'm going to uh, probably pull um, two shots. Right, uh, depends on how fast I actually dial in the coffee beans. Right, if I can dial in really fast, right, I'll just make a cup, make a shot of espresso. Then I'm gonna steam um, uh, some milk and make a cup of latte. So basically, um, I'm just gonna show you the functions about this machine. So I have just switched on the Quick Meal Sunny. Uh, the model is two zero four six. Some of my subscribers told me that uh, the model name two zero four six is actually very futuristic. I do agree. Right, it is like we are using a machine from the future, but this technology is nothing new, right? Uh, it has been used on the Ascaso Baby Dream, uh, Baby T Plus, um, which is also a brew boiler connected to a thermal block and a steam boiler to pro produce a steam as well as the hot water, right? So it's the same technology, right? Um, on the Ascaso, right, there's actually an app, dedicated app uh, that you can use to control the parameters, like setting temperature, setting what time it wakes up, Setting what time it goes off. Uh, you can set the brew temperature, the, the steam temperature, and so on and so forth. Right? That's what Ascaso BBD Plus. Right? Whatever the BBD Plus can do, right? The quick meal signing can do as well. Right? Uh, and on top of that, right, of course the boiler, um, uh, the boiler inside the quick meal signing is actually pretty big. Right? I would say it's comparable to uh, the quick meal Rubino, right? Uh, you know, quick meal Rubino is a single boiler heat exchanger and the boiler is quite big. And the boiler is situated at the back of this machine, vertically, right? Uh, the thermal block is actually right on top here, just below here, right? And uh, interestingly, both thermal block and the blue, uh, and the steam boilers are uh, both are lag, which means both are wrapped in terms of insulation to maintain the thermal stability as well as to reduce heat loss. So that is uh, something that is really good to have, right? And not every machine has their boilers, you know, lag with insulations, right? So that is a bonus for this machine. Um, just to answer some of the questions that my um, um, or, or or maybe uh, feedbacks from the previous video, right? The previous video mentioned that this machine looks uh, not as premium as compared to as Castle. Uh, that I totally disagree, right? The paint finish is actually very premium. It may not pick up that well on video, but the finishing on the paint, uh, the paint job is really well done. And uh, it doesn't have any plastic parts here, right? Um, the drip tray is totally stainless steel, right? Uh, same as the uh, Scarso Baby D Plus, but not on the steel Duo PID, right? The steel Duo PID has a plastic drip tray, right? So um, that's not ideal, uh, but that's what the Scarso has done to the um, steel Duo PID, right? But for the quick meal, everything here is stainless steel. And this quick meal comes with two polyfuter. One bottomless, uh, the other one is uh, double spouted, right? And of course, the Ascaso Steel Duo PID comes with a, a solid wood uh, polar filter with double spout, but it doesn't come with a bottomless polar filter, right? And uh, another difference is the Ascaso Steel Duo PID uses dual thermal block. So every time you uh, steam the coffee, you have to wait for about three to four seconds before the steam picks up and then it starts to steam the milk. The power of the steam cannot be compared on the uh, quick meal side, right? Um, this uh, steaming on this machine is a beast, right? Um, I would say it's very, very close to commercial grade steaming. Uh, steaming is very powerful. It's done in seconds, right? Uh, really, literally seconds. And probably within 10 to 15 seconds, you can finish steaming milk, right? That's how fast this machine is. And uh, aesthetically, I think it's very well balanced, right? Uh, with a pressure gauge at the middle, right? Uh, this is the steam button. This is the hot water button. The single and double shot, right? These are pre-programmed, which means you can cannot adjust the pressure on these two, right? But you have an option to use the um the flow control meter here, right? There's a some sort of a joystick control whereby you can actually start and stop the brew head uh, by pressing this button, and you can actually adjust the lever, right, to control the um what we call to control the the flow through the group head, right? So with this flow control, you can actually do a um, 
custom pre-infusion, right? You can let's set pre-infusion at a certain pressure by looking at the pressure gauge here. And then you can ramp up the pressure and reduce the pressure of the pump as and when you wish, right? So it, this is something that the Baby D Plus doesn't have, right? And Baby D Plus is a lot larger. But of course, Baby D Plus runs on a rotary pump, right? This one runs on a vibratory pump. But because it doesn't use um, a thermal block to produce steam, right? So when the steam is activated on this machine, you do not hear the, the you know, the uh, pump kicking in to try to push the steam out from the thermal block, right? So that's another plus point on this machine, right? Um, as we mentioned, the temperature is already up. Currently, I'm setting the brew, pre brew, brew, brew pressure, a uh, brew temperature at 94 degrees Celsius, and the steam temperature is at 130 degrees Celsius. I believe the steam temperature can go up further to increase the power of the, the steaming, right? So without further ado, let me show you uh, a few things, right? Which we didn't manage to show in the first video during the unboxing. Um, so I think I did show that this the controller, this this joystick controller controls the flow. So very quickly, I'm just going to run through the all the buttons here. Of course, by pressing this first button here, it's dispensing water from here, right? So maybe I can get my cup and I can I'm going to put under here, right? And there's a raise stand as well, so you can actually adjust the position of your stand, right? You can put it here. Let me see the position. Hmm, I think the position is meant to be here, right? Let me see uh, whether I put the position correctly. Yep, you can put it here. You can adjust a few positions, right? So if you put here, then you can actually put the cup here nicely, right? So first, let's test the hot water dispenser. Right, pressing of a button, right? Of course, the second button is the steam, right? So uh, it's a good time for me to heat up the cup as well. The top cup warming tray is actually pretty hot, right? Because the thermal block is just right under the steaming, right? Currently, it heated a uh, two tip steam hole, right? You have a choice to replace the tip with one or three, right? All are provided in the package, right? You don't have to purchase separately, right? So let me show you the steam, right? So you can see the steam is instantaneous. When you engage the steam button, the steam perch out immediately, right? You do not have to wait uh, for the thermal block to kick into action, right? So that's another bonus of this machine, right? And of course, you have a single shot and double shot button. All these can be programmed um, by, by uh, I have to check whether this program by time or by volumetric. That, that's something I need to confirm later on. So uh, by pressing on the button here, right, you will go into, single shot whatever time you program on this right and you can see the short timer start to activate and the LED light will start to uh, switch on and the moment you switch off the blue button the LED light will be off and then you can see that the uh, um, L LCD here will return back to the initial settings to show you the blue temperature as well as the steam temperature right it has a date over there but it's very very small right so for um, slightly older guys like me, right? I, I couldn't really read it without my reading glasses. So this is a bit too small, right? Right, so next, of course, is the double cut button, right, double shot button, right? So again, you press this, the LED light will switch on, and then um, again, the shot timer will start, right? Right, of course, right, now let's lock out the poly heater. Um, let's change this to a bottomless this time, right? Okay, so it comes with uh, two double shot baskets, one for the spouted and one for the bottomless. So, yep, so um, I will say the mesh is, is, is very good quality, right? Um, the inside looks like the, uh, the matrix on the IMS, right? But the, on the outside, there are holes, right? Let me show you closer what I mean, right? If you look at the mesh here, right, it is very fine. Right, you can see tiny holes. Right on the back, it is the same, right?
right? So let's lock up the for loop meter. And then let's uh, use the um, joystick here to activate the, uh, the boot. So now it is at a maximum flow, right? With the joystick, you can actually control and reduce the flow, right? Again, by touching um, the, uh, the, the, the tip of the joystick here, you are actually starting and stopping the proof, right? And the same function, when you switch on the proof, right, the LED will light up, the short timer will start to activate, right? So basically, that's the introduction of this machine, right? Having said so much, about 10 minutes of me ranting here, right? Let's get on to making espresso. Right, let's make some coffee. And uh, I'm just going to use, finish up my dark rolls from uh, um, Indonesia, right? This is the Indonesian Gayo. I roasted this about 10 to 12 days ago, right? Um, this is roasted towards the medium dark side. And there's a sheen of oil covering the beans, right? It's not very oily, but you can definitely see the oil stick sipping out. So this is actually a good, very good for espresso. Right, so let me pour this away. The cup is nicely warm up. Right, okay. so let me put this double salted away. Right, and another feature on this quick meal sani is the temper. Right, the temper is actually magnetized, and you can actually store the temper here. So you can have a choice to temp it, or you have a choice to temp your coffee this way. Right, so let's see which one is actually better. Maybe I'll do the first one with temping like this. And the second by preparing my tamping on the tamping station, right? So let's do that. Okay, let me switch on the coffee grinder as well, right? Right, and of course, today I'm going to use, I'm continuing testing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the DS64E, right, the white color version, right, the espresso delegated variation from the uh, very well known DS64 uh, coffee grinder, right? Okay, so the powder filter is properly warm up and it's dry. So let's lock it up again. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to measure about 18 grams of coffee. The coffee smells nice, right? Um, I don't really do dark rolls very very often, but occasionally I, I when I test the bean, I I will tend to do uh, a slight different rolls every time to see whether uh, what kind of flavor profile I can get on the same bean with uh, different rolls profile like rolls degree of the bean right. So the first shot I'm going to dose eighteen point one gram, and let's see how well the retention, uh, how much retention we're going to get from this DF sixty four E right. Um, this machine is stock. I've not changed anything that's inside this grinder yet. Um, at the moment, I don't feel there's a need to. But uh, in the subsequent video, I'm going to open up the grinder and see the retention that's inside with the original stock decanter that comes with the DF64E, right? So, um, and the, the top cover is actually uh, designed by Thomas, right? And this is one of my favorite design from Thomas because now you do not have to open the cap. Uh, to, to drop the beans and close the cover again, right? So now you can load the beans on top, right? Just have to load slowly, and then I'm just going to grind using manual mode. Let's do for a little longer. Right, takes about 20 seconds, including bellowing. Right, so let's see how much coffee am I getting out from here. 18.1, so zero retention indeed, right? I dose 18.1, I'm getting back 18.1. So, so far, this DF64E has been very promising. Right, I, I know it is not as versatile as the DF64, um, you know, the previous version, but um, if you are just grinding for espresso, I think this is great. Right, of course, there's a little bit of design flaw. 
I don't really like the adjustment you know, uh, to be at that position. But I would want the adjustment maybe to, have, to be at the side here rather than directly below the shoot because the coffee powder may get inside if you're not careful, right? And uh, static issue is still there, right? So, of course, I'm going to try to do a slightly different uh, RBD method, which is instead of using the spray bottle, I'm just going to use a chopstick method, right? Right, so let's make coffee. First, I'm going to pull espresso. Right, the polyphyter is properly warm up. Right, fluffy ground. And the first one, I'm not going to do any uh, pop preparation. I'm just going to tan directly from here. Right. Um, I'm not too sure whether um, this will. I have dosed a little bit too much coffee, but let's give it a try. Yep, I think uh, 18 gram may be a little too much, but you can see that I'm actually creating an indentation. Uh, let me try to remove the temper and temp it slightly harder so that the coffee goes down. Right, let's give you a try again. Okay, so I'm only able to lock the polyphyter to the six o'clock position. Right, but let's see whether the uh, preparation uh, using the stock temper is actually good. Right, so let me bring you closer to see the extraction. Right, so before that, let me um, adjust the uh, flow control to go at zero flow. Then I'm going to activate the, the glue. Right, looking at the pressure here, I'm going to increase the pressure. You can see the pressure going up. Okay, it's um, spraying quite a little bit. Right, so you can see um, there's quite a little bit of uh, squirting everywhere. Uh, but nonetheless, right, let's taste the shot. Okay, so cheers. So let's taste the espresso. The short time is about 25 seconds. Um, The body is very full. Uh, by the way, the burr that comes with my DX4 is the um, DLC burr, DLC burr, which is diamond like carbon. Um, so the burr is um, it is harder than the stock titanium or the titanium coated burr. Um, and when I feel the burr set, it is very, very different in terms of touch as compared to the titanium. But titanium feels more rough and edgy. Um, the DLC burr feels uh, more premium and well made. I can see the burr uh, when I touch it. It is smooth on the on the surface, but the edges are sharp, and um, the edges are much much better made as compared to the stock Itamio. The body is very full. There's sweetness, very little acidity, right? As expected from Dr. Rose. Mm, I, I will say that I'm I'm pretty happy with the um the rolls which I did and the kind of espresso I'm getting is the sweeter sweeter notes. Um, it doesn't have any early earthy flavor as um you know uh as you found in um, some other Indonesian uh, beans where with a uh, lower altitude. I have to check what is the altitude of this uh, green bean, right? But uh, on the whole, I'm pretty happy with this shot. Even though there's a squirting and you know, probably channeling uh, in some areas, but I can definitely improve the shot uh, by doing a better preparations. Why not let's make a second shot by doing a proper WDT? Uh, or maybe I'll distribute the you know distribute this before I temp and I'll not use this temper, I'll use the temper that I have, right? So let's pull another shot of espresso and give you a test. Mm. 
But this time I'm not going to dose 18 grams, I'm going to dose maybe 17 grams, right? And let's see how it goes. It's still a good shot. Right, so let me clean up the, the mess on this uh, counter, right? And then let's pull another shot. Right, uh, another good thing, a bad, I would say, bad thing about white, not really bad thing, is that when you have squirting over, it is very easy to spot, right? If you have black color machines, right, the, uh, it may not appear as dirty as the white one. But the white one really uh, makes the machine look a lot larger than the actual, right? Right, so let me clean up the mess here. Right, however, the part is very dry. And uh, we knock out, you really knock out really clean. Right, look at the uh, bottle filter. Right, so let me clean up the machine. Right, I'm going to remove the uh, laser, you know, the, the sticker that wrapped the stainless steel. Pull it out, right, on the machine. The drip tray pull out nicely. You don't have to tilt the drip tray, even though when it's full, right, so there's a less chance of uh, water spilling out. Right, so okay, it's back to the original clean condition. Right, I'm a little bit OCD on the cleanliness on the espresso machine. So I, I like my machines clean every time before I use. So whenever you get dirty, I get a little bit, you know, uh, edgy right and uh i'm going to use i'm going to test another cup from three bomber right this is the espresso cups not the double layer glass as i as you have seen just now right this is the single wall cup not a cup it's a glass right right this is how it looks like uh, it is a, bit, a little bit frosty on the surface, not as clear as those uh, uh, normal glass, right? So you can see this is a bit frosty. Right? I like the texture. It looks almost like fine glasses, right? So let's uh, just heat it up. All right. So let's pour the water away. Okay, let's get ready for the second shot, right? Uh, I'm going to pull one more espresso, right? The grind size seems to be okay, but I'm going to dose slightly lesser. Okay, let me get a spoon. All right, we'll be using the same beans. 17 gram this time. Okay, a bit too much. Okay, um, let me take out another one. 17.2 grams, right? So let's see. Uh, are we able to reproduce the uh, zero retention again on the DF64E? About 25 seconds, including bellowing. 17.0, right? So I'm pretty impressed so far, right? On this grinder. Right, so let's dose properly this time. And do a proper pulp preparation. Right, so right now, I'm going to distribute. Ah, so, okay, so this is, Because this this um leveler is designed for fifty eight point three five mm, 
So the basket that comes with quick meal um, is a little bit too, uh, it's a little bit smaller, right? But tamping does um, tamp properly with 58.35 mm. So now we have a total flat surface instead of a concave surface. Right, so now let's see whether we, we are able to pull a better a shot as compared to just now. Still squirting. Right, um, it is still splashing everywhere, right? Which means the pub preparation is still not ideal. I probably need to uh, do a little bit of uh, WDT before I and uh, let, I'll figure out what's wrong with my pub preparation with this basket because this is not the traditional um, 50 mm size, uh, the 50 mm uh, polar filter. So I'm uh, I actually have to test a little bit more, right? But let's taste the espresso. Right, before that, again, uh, it's creating a mess on my table, right? Uh, this is very common if you use the uh, bottomless polar filter, right? So get ready to have a very dirty and messy table, right? So it is good to have mat like this, right? So let me just clean up a little bit and then let's try the coffee. Okay, so let's give you a try. Cheers. Still sweet. No, as um, I would say very very little acidity, right? Uh, mainly because this is a much darker rose. Um, I'm quite surprised that. I, I'm, I'm actually not tasting a lot of burnt taste, even though this is a medium dark rose, and uh, I can see that the oil is actually sipping out from the beans. Uh, the beans has been properly rested, and I'm actually getting good quality espresso here. Yeah, this is actually pretty sweet as compared to some of the Italian rose I've tasted. So even though the um, when I pull the shot, it is coating everywhere, but it still produces a, a pretty good decent and good espresso, right? So now let's move on to making a cup of latte, right? So again, we're gonna start with uh, a shot of espresso. Then after that, we're going to um, um, steam some milk and then we make a cup of latte, right? Show you the puck, right? You can see at the side, there's a hole here, right? Which means the channeling will probably go there. But the coffee still knock out nicely. This is done without any puff screen. And I'm not too sure whether the puff screen can actually fit on top of this, right? So let me just give you a quick flush. Hmm, so yesterday when I did the video, I mentioned that the flow control is not controlling the uh the bug, the, 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 the blue button here, but it seems that it is able to control it. So let me try again. So now here's a full flow. Oh yeah, the flow control is still controlling the, uh, even uh, the front button here. Let me see here. Okay, with, with the port 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 uh, port filter, it's a little bit hard to see. Okay, let me just remove the port filter. And now we'll try that again. Yeah, it is not dispensing much liquid. Yes, I can confirm that it can, the flow control still controls the flow here, right? So whether it's a single shot or double shot preset button on the front, you can still use the flow control to control it, right? So this doesn't run straight as a uh, whatever barrage that the machine has set, right? Okay, 
espresso. Let's make another shot. Right, so this will be the third shot of espresso. Now uh, we're still going to use a bottomless, right? Regardless of uh, how messy it gets. Right, you can see the bean has oil. Right, exactly 17 grand. I'm quite happy with this Indonesian gallo, but by the way, I'm pretty surprised, right? As I mentioned in my other video, I don't really roast to the dark side. Oh, got the bean. It will probably be pointy grain, right? I can still feel, I can still hear the bean jumping inside. Like, of course, this sign doesn't have an uh, anti popcorn. Okay, let's see the retention. Sixteen point eight, right, which is a uh, exactly two grams, a uh, point two grams of coffee, which is due to the bean that actually jumped out just now, right. Okay, so now let's dry the polyphilter. Then let's pull a third shot, right? Okay, the coffee grinded by the DF64E, I would say, uh, with the DLC burr is pretty consistent. Right, this time I'm just going to try to use this and temp. It fits exactly. I right, can see the camping is very level and it gives a slightly concave uh, surface. Okay, this time let's try to use a cup. Right, let's see the angle from this side. Start. You can see the pressure going up. So I'm only expecting about 20 seconds, right? But the espresso looks good, right? So let's uh, get ready and steam some milk. Right, so let me get some milk and uh, let's do the steaming. Right, we're going to use the uh, milk jug given by Quick Meal, right, together with the Quick Meal Sunny. Okay, let me give you a better angle of the steaming. Okay, let's uh, push the steam. Anti burn steam one. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will try to position the steam tip this way and then I'm just going to release steam automatically. Right, it's not automatic. I still have to adjust the position.
right? I may have uh, formed a little bit too too much, right? But uh, let's just give it a try anyway. I think it's really good to have an empty burn steam uh, steam one. Okay, so let's uh, try to see whether the milk whiskey is able to get some art. Right, the espresso still looks pretty good. Right, let me bring the camera over the other side to give you a better view. Right, still able to do the art. Right, a simple design. Right, so cheers. Yeah, with milk and uh, the darker rose. Um, it's really really chocolatey. Body is good, right? This is a cappuccino cup, so I actually use lesser milk. The aftertaste is really good, right? It's very creamy, and I still can taste um, the, the chocolatiness and the sweetness from the coffee, right? There's totally no burnt taste at all. So I'm actually pretty impressed by um, the darker rose itself. So usually I will try to avoid dark rose, but now I may actually take a, another look at it because. I'm actually getting quite decent espresso shots. That's why I see uh, milk based drink, right? So, right, this is UI once again. Thank you for joining, right? Um, leave in the comment section down below. Let me uh, let me know what you think about this quick meal sunny, right? Uh, is it something? Uh, is it a machine that you will you'll be considering getting, right? The advantage of this machine is the efficiency, right? You can actually switch off the steam boiler if you don't use the uh, milk frother to froth any milk. Right, so that will actually save you more power. And by using the thermal block to um, brew espresso, right, it, it will bring the machine to brewing temperature in within two minutes, two or three minutes time at the most, right? Which means this is super efficient. And by having a steam boiler, right, you're always drawing uh, fresh water from the tank. Sorry, not a steam boiler. When you have a thermal block uh, to make coffee as a brewing coffee, for brewing coffee, right? Um, you always draw fresh water from the water tank, right? Instead of having the water stuck in the boiler, and that's a, another good advantage of using a, a separate boiler for steaming, because when you do steaming, your steam should be dry, and you shouldn't be drawing so much water from the steam boiler anyway, right? Uh, the only thing is that if you use the machine for americano, right, then um, the bigger boiler size will also ensure that you have the thermal stability there. So uh, let me know again in the comment section down below what you think about this machine, right? Um, for me personally, I, I, I think this is um, almost as almost as everything I need for a home use machine even. Um, but if you're going to use this machine commercially, I'm not, I'm, uh, because it doesn't have any plumb in line, uh, water line, or, you know, it doesn't have any uh, water outlet. So it, it makes it slightly not so ideal for commercial use. Um, but I, I think it's possible for a small office, right? Um, it's definitely very capable, right? So thank you for joining me today. This is CY once again, right? Um, I hope you liked uh, the content today and do remember to like our videos, right? Subscribe to our channels and then share uh, the video with your friend if you think that uh, this video will actually uh, provide them with information about new machines and uh, new grinders and things like that, right? And also don't forget to ring the bell, right? If you want to stay updated with all our video production so that if we launch a new video, you'll not miss a single one, right? So thank you for joining me today. This is UI. Uh, I will see you in a, very soon in the next video and stay safe.